scams, mismanaged investment platforms, misleading marketing statements, and ridiculous terms and conditions are still a thing in 2020, which is why I had to make yet another video warning you from some of the investment platforms that will happily take your money. In today's video, you will learn what kind of nonsense some of the platforms feed you and how you can avoid losing more money on dodgy investment sites. Regardless of whether you are investing on P2P lending, crowd lending, or crypto lending platforms, the chance that fraudsters will scam you is real. The only way to avoid funding Ponzi schemes is to do your own research and trust your ability to make sound financial decisions. There are a few ways to speed up your research, but you should not take any shortcuts. If you only read the information on the platform's website, a few comments on Reddit, and watch paid ads on YouTube, you can be sure that sooner or later, you will lose some money. Let's not be naive here. There are plenty of scams in the financial world, and nobody will protect your investments, meaning you can only rely on yourself. The premise of investment sites is to use your money and generate additional income. Some platforms disclose their revenue generating activities, while others don't. The number one rule you must remember is that if you don't understand the business model, don't invest. This will eliminate most dodgy platforms as those typically don't want you to know how they make money. The truth is that, unfortunately, the information that many retail investors receive is often not very accurate or even misleading. The reason for this is evident. Platforms will not be telling you to invest in their high-risk investment strategies. That's just not appealing. Instead, they will feed you with marketing statements, which are often just a smokescreen to cover up their high-risk investment schemes. The result of this is that investors are treated as dump money. The goal of questionable platforms is to manipulate their audience and make them believe they should not miss out on the opportunity to invest in their products. Throw in a few statements like unbank yourself and banks are not your friends, which many retail investors can relate to, and you have a good chance to raise 11 billion US dollars. As Celsius is right, they couldn't do it without you. It turned out that their high-risk revenue-generating activities didn't pay off for the community, as the platform froze withdrawals on the 13th of June and filed for bankruptcy one month later. Now, over 1 million users are waiting whether they get their money back. As if this would not be enough, in a recent motion, Celsius asked to rehire its former CFO for a $62,000 salary per month to navigate the bankruptcy proceedings. So Celsius management is paying themselves hundreds of thousands in salaries, while retail investors are left with nothing. While the Celsius chapter isn't closed yet, investors should not expect a positive outcome. Many affected users got burned and won't probably touch a similar platform again. Celsius is one example of many dodgy companies that lure retail investors into their schemes. Even in Europe, we have had a fair share of scams from Kutzel and Vestio to Groupier or Lendy. There are also other platforms that are still operating while misusing investors' funds. Some of them are Crowdester, Vice Fund, Viventor, or Fast Invest. Whether they are scams or just don't give a damn about investors is something you can decide on your own. At the end of the day, getting something out of those platforms will be very difficult. If you see all of those scams on the internet, Internet, you might feel better having your money sitting on your bank account and accepting that double-digit inflation rate which burns your money away. While I would understand your decision, there are ways to avoid investing in scams. Most dodgy platforms follow specific patterns that you can easily spot on your own. While sometimes you need to dive down the rabbit hole to verify certain claims, often you will be able to spot some red flags while doing a bit of research. So, what is something questionable platforms have in common apart from stealing your money? First, they will present themselves as risk-free and attractive investment platform that is easy to use and pays out high interest rates. If something sounds too good to be true, it's often the case. Now, if the offered rates are high, it's something that you have to pay close attention to. Depending on the platform's demand for capital, the rates can be higher or lower. There is no free lunch in the P2P lending space, Meaning that if the rates are higher, the platform or the lender is ready to pay a premium price to attract retail investors. So if you see a cashback bonus or a higher interest rate, there is a reason for it. Some investors will say that high reward is connected with high risks, and I would agree to a certain extent, but it's not always the case. More sophisticated dodgy platforms act with the market and lower the rates not to raise eyebrows. Don't assume that scammers are stupid. Most questionable companies strategically cover up their business practices to appear as a trust-for-free platform. That's how they can keep their Ponzi scheme running. So just looking at the return won't be enough. You certainly should aim to understand the business model behind a platform. None of the 
other platforms are paying you interest out of goodwill. It's a money-making business and you must understand it to evaluate the risk you are taking. So how can you find out how a platform is making money? Well, you either browse through their FAQ page or reach out directly. I highly recommend contacting any platform before joining just to get a sense of what type of answers you get. Don't bother registering if they cannot share how they make money with you. It's actually very common that platforms don't disclose how they make money, so this is really something you should dive deeper into before signing up. If you're happy with the answers, you should read the terms and conditions to get an idea about your rights as a client. In most cases, the terms favor the platform and by investing in a dedicated site, you agree that you might lose money. There's always risk involved when lending money to others. You should look for clauses regarding the termination of accounts, loan extensions, withdrawal limits, and changes to terms and conditions. Those are all terms that will limit the usability of the platform. You should carefully study crypto lending platforms clauses about rehypothecation and other yield generating activities. No regulator or organization is vetting the terms and conditions, so you only rely on your ability to understand the terms before registering. Also make sure you know who your counterparty is. If there is no counterparty with a legal address in the terms and conditions, just stay away from it. Some platforms offer services from offshore jurisdictions, some even lie about where they are based. The perfect example is Nexo. You might read that they are based in London or Switzerland when Googling their location. In fact, they operate from Sofia and the whole city is plastered with job ads to join the platform, so don't get fooled. Of course, you won't find that information on their website. Operating from Bulgaria is just not as appealing. But it's crucial to understand where the platform is based. If the site goes down, you should be able to rely on the legal system in our country to hold the management accountable. So after you verify the business model, read the terms and conditions, make sure you know from what jurisdiction the platform operates. Now that you have done that, it's time to research the management. You can start by checking their LinkedIn profile and googling their names. This often gives you a good idea about their previous experience. If the person in charge doesn't have a finance background, it's something to pay attention to. An IT developer, for example, doesn't usually qualify to lead an investor platform. Also stay away from platforms led by people tied to politics. For instance, Nexo is led by Antony Trenchev, a former member of the parliament, and Kosta Kanchev, the grandson of a member of the repressive state security agency under communism. People who have close connections to politics might exploit those in their favor. If you don't believe that, I suggest you research the Investio case, which has links to Latvian political circles. Apart from people being tied to politics, you might also find out that members of the management were previously connected to scams and bankruptcies. For instance, some time ago, when Nexo was still operating legally from Estonia, the company onboarded William Arthur Wieseland, who was tied to TrustBuddy, which stole £3.5 million from investors. Celsius former CFO Salam Shalem was just recently arrested in connection to crypto scam run by Moshe Hogek in Tel Aviv. Artur Gezari was shortly also a member of Crowdester after his company Monify stole money from investors on by Venter. His time at Crowdester was short-lived as investors didn't want him to be part of the company. Maybe our reporting about Mr. Gezari's track record back in the beginning of 2021 has impacted this status to a certain extent. So the takeaway from this is that if you find something dodgy about the people in charge, it's a sign to stay away from the platform. Conflict of interest might harm the performance of your portfolio as well. For example, several projects on Crowdester are in one way or another connected to Crowdester's CEO Yanis Tima or his relatives and friends. If you're interested to learn more about the company, you will find a link to the investigative article by the Latvian newspaper in the video description. Crowdester is not the only platform with an apparent conflict of interest. Mintos, the largest P2P lending marketplace in Europe, is full of shareholders that fund their own lending operations through Mintos. For example, Igor Skysenfels, who owns a part of Mintos, is also a shareholder of Delphin Group, Finco, Mogo, Monego, and many other companies on Mintos. Just look at the suspended lenders on Mintos that are partly owned by Igor's Kessenfelds. It's evident that this conflict of interest doesn't positively impact investors' investment in those companies. Apart from suspended lenders, Mintos is also facing issues with pending payments, which causes a lot of frustration amongst investors that are still active on the platform. The conflict of interest doesn't end with Mintos. By Venter, the relatively unsuccessful P2P lending marketplace was acquired by the Dutch lender Atlantis Financiers back in 2020, just to shut down the platform one year later. Atlantis Financiers is owned by the Gielen Group, 
Founded by Alex Gielan, a seemingly happy 29-year-old founder responsible for losing investors' funds without repercussions. The Washington Mail was so amazed by his success that they even published a piece highlighting his outstanding achievements. Then there is another scam led by Donatas Shotkowskas and his buddy who looks like he's ready to cycle away with investors' funds. The list of scams doesn't end here. Fast Invest is another platform led by people with no moral compass and fraudulent behavior. The brain a bodas page says it all. If you want to find out who is leading the platform, you won't find it on their website as the CEO made sure to remove her face. I get it. If I were scamming people, I would do the same, Simone. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Here is your face so everyone can see who is misusing investors' money. I could likely spend another hour naming dodgy platforms. There is no shortage of them and for some weird reason, several platforms still operate as if nothing happens. Unfortunately, the P2P lending sector is still too small for regulators to finally develop a meaningful regulation to protect investors. While there have been some recent developments in 2022, they still don't have anything meaningful on the table, so you have to trust the management not to run away with your money. Now, how do you build trust? Understanding the business model, analyzing the terms, researching the management, and reviewing the financials are vital factors that should be part of your due diligence. Unfortunately, plenty of investors are taking shortcuts and relying on information on the platform's website, Reddit, Trustpilot, or paid ads on YouTube. Those soft factors mean absolutely nothing. There is no way for you to prove the authenticity of a review on Trustpilot. And to be frank with you, many of them look fake. There is an entire business around fake reviews and some companies are happy to pay for them. Now, can you trust a stranger on Reddit to share his authentic experience or in-depth research? Especially in the crypto space, it's quite common that platforms will always aim to control the narrative in forums and get rid of comments that are not aligned with the company's agenda. And if you write something critical, you will be instantly flagged as spreading thought. Reading comments on YouTube is probably the worst research strategy you can follow. YouTube is a place where any random person can anonymously share his or her thoughts. While some fans of platforms that I've criticized come up with all the different reasons to justify that I'm wrong, it's not something you should blindly follow. Just look at some of the comments we got on a video where I warned about the risk for Celsius investors six months before the company shut down. This person here is likely citing some press releases as regulators flagged Celsius in the past on multiple occasions. Here, this user claims to have his two million rather sitting on Celsius than on a hardware wallet. Also, it's good to know that he loves thought and buys more so. That's an excellent strategy to lose money, for sure. AMAs seem to be also something that many users appreciate. The problem with those AMAs is that they typically don't address any important questions, but rather promote a platform, which unfortunately is the case for many companies. Here is another great comment from someone who has likely spent five minutes writing it just to say that my negative points are about turning farts into thunderclaps. It's great that he felt safe with Celsius and its radical transparency and security two months before they shut down and locked billions of users' funds. I wonder how you feel now. If you are watching, please leave a comment below. Having a different opinion is perfectly fine, but it doesn't mean that it's something that you should take seriously, especially not by anonymous users on the internet. There are also people commenting that they prefer to trust the company and give them the benefit of the doubt. Let me tell you something. Giving someone the benefit of the doubt is the worst thing you can do, especially when it comes to investing money online. Celsius has never been keen to have an open discussion with me. It was much more appealing to partner with other creators who supported the company's scheme without questioning its business model. The P2P talks here on this channel are meant to answer the questions of our community and address serious issues and potential risks. All of them are non-sponsored and this year I even visited some of the platforms by myself to check out their operations just to provide you with some valuable insights. This is not something you will see anywhere else. If a seemingly good platform doesn't even bother answering our invitation to talk about the platform's business model, it doesn't look good. So to wrap this up, you can use this channel's content as part of your research, but I encourage you not to rely on it blindly. Things change over time and so does the risk. While we aim to warn our viewers 
our readers on our website or in our newsletter, you must monitor the news surrounding the platform you invest in on your own. We don't have the resources to make a dedicated video about every single scam. Our research, development and the production of videos like this one eat much of the available budget, which is quite limited. While you can use P2P Empower as one of the resources when doing your research, you should not take it as 100% assurance at all times. Even though we tried our best to provide you with the most accurate information that we gather, we don't have access to everything. This video scratches just the surface about the dark side of P2P lending and often there is much more shitty stuff going on than what you see on the surface. Unfortunately, there are way more bad platforms than good ones. A quick view into our review section says it all. While investing on top-rated platforms on P2P Emperor is a great way to earn passive income, it is still not risk-free. Specific risks are just outside of the control of a platform and if those risks materialize, you might lose some funds or your ability ability to withdraw money might get limited. At the end of the day, every business faces market risks and it's impossible to avoid all the potential negative scenarios while earning above average returns. The best advice I can give you is to think for yourself, don't take any shortcuts and if you are unsure about an investment platform, it's likely better to avoid it. While this video can be perceived as critical or even sarcastic, it's certainly not a joke. Right the opposite. It's sad to see investors being manipulated by greedy entrepreneurs who ultimately made billions with little to no repercussions. While we can't protect you from everything, we can help you raise awareness about questionable platforms which act as unregulated hedge funds with the sole purpose to gamble or worse, steal your money. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the like button, consider subscribing and leave a comment for the algorithm. If you want to support our project, you can also invite us for a cup of coffee, which is highly appreciated. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.